Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Church of St. Richard of Chichester. Today we're celebrating the fourth Sunday in Advent, and the Mass this morning is for James Weber at the request of the Weber family. Forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But the night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be the commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of 
who God is, who God's only Son is, uh, how God uh, reveals Himself to us, and our relationship with Him. Right? Now, I'm, I'm old enough, uh, one of my previous pastors says, Father, if you're just old, uh, that uh, remember if you're watching uh, like TV back in the day before VCRs, like if you missed something, you missed something, right? There's no rewind, right? Uh, and then even later on with uh, VCRs, one of the first home recording devices, uh, right? You have to rewind tapes, right? Uh, the younger crowd don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't really date myself, right? But even for the rental stores, right? You have to be kind and rewind, right? Uh, and it's annoying if you you gotta you know start to watch a movie that wasn't rewound yet on a on a VHS tape. Um, now, I guess in the modern world, it's all digital, right? It's it's easy to rewind stuff. But uh, why I mention that in uh, the church's celebration of the liturgy, especially during uh, right this liturgical year, Advent season, uh, the major uh, seasons right of the year, it is a, in a sense. I think that it was a way for us to kind of rewind in a liturgical sense. Uh, that anything that we missed the last time around, and God knows I miss stuff uh, regularly, right, in the liturgy, uh, to be able to, in a sense, rewind in a ritual, liturgical sense, so that we may right, basically catch the gospel, right, to encounter God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to re-experience this grace-filled season of Advent, this grace-filled time, right, whenever we uh, are participate in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, whenever uh, the, through the Church, right, our Lord proclaims to us the Word of God, and especially, right, to encounter uh, the most uh, blessed Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In this Advent season, right, to encounter more fully and faithfully the mystery of God's only Son, who He is, His only Son, how His Father reveals Him to us, right, through the Holy Spirit, uh, and to encounter Him. That's the whole point of Advent and what Christmas is about, right? The Incarnation, our Lord becoming flesh. Uh, the readings that the uh, Church has selected today for this fourth Sunday of Advent uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. The, um, the Israelites had a, an expectation through the, uh, what the prophets had foretold, or God had revealed to them, of the coming of the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, uh, who would be in the line of King David. So it turns out, the prophet Samuel, from our first reading, right, uh, from the book of the prophet, speaks about King David. King David was promised that his ancestral uh, kingly line would never end. And yet, there was a little problem historically. <laughs> they were uh, conquered, or invaded and conquered by the Assyrians and the Babylonians, uh, effectively ending, in a worldly sense, King David's rule. So, how could God keep his promise? Um, Forget that it's at Zechariah, the last uh, king in the line of David, he was blinded and dragged in chains into exile where he dies amongst the pagans, <clears throat> right? Not a very glamorous end, right, to an otherwise, you know, fruitful uh, lineage. And yet, the Israelites, heeding the word of God, God <clears throat> revealing himself to them, understood that somehow, someday, God would provide, that some this Messiah, the Anointed One, who would be a descendant of the line of King David, right, this stump of Jesse, his father, right, uh, would return to the throne and God would fulfill his promise. What we're hearing uh, proclaimed to us during this Advent season preparing for Christmas. The Israelites believed God. No surprise, right? He's God, right? And then sort of how it goes, and God's, uh, not only the prophecies foretold, right, God is always faithful to His covenants, Old Covenant, Old Testament, New Covenant, New Testament, right, with the incarnation of Christ. And God doesn't just fulfill the bare minimum of His covenant promises, He overfills them, abundantly fills them, fulfills them, right, beyond our expectation. So, 
The Jews, in waiting for this Messiah, they were waiting for a son of God, an earthly king. And in the incarnation of Jesus Christ, God the Father reveals His only eternal Son, the incarnate living Word of God, the one who is in the line of King David, but right, He is Christ the King who will remain King of God's kingdom for all eternity, long after this planet and this solar system have faded to dust. Right? God's promise, some of what is going on. In the Gospel, our Blessed Mother, right, at this, uh, we call it her Annunciation, where she gives her fiat, her consent to the will of God for her, how different it is from our modern day, right? Um, an angel appears to her, you know, uh, modern science world will have to trouble with that one right there, right? Uh, and what does the angel announce? Hail Mary, right? Full of grace, the Lord is with you. And she's, you know, troubled by what this means, right? There's an angel speaking to her, right? <clears throat> Telling her, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and you will rule over his house forever. Plus, more, of course, was familiar with the Old Testament. She knew what the prophets said, right? She knows that God can do you know, there's nothing that God can do, right? That he's always faithful to his covenant. And what does she say? She doesn't hesitate. Now that grace where she's conceived without any sin, she's able to freely exercise her free will fully and faithfully to consent and will what God wills for her. And she right, conceives in her womb by the Holy Spirit, the only Son of God. She's the first to encounter the mystery of Jesus Christ incarnate in the flesh, in her womb, right? But, uh, so my brothers and sisters in Christ, like, uh, I was just wondering, I mentioned it in the bulletin, that you may have noticed there's been some concerted effort to avoid saying Christmas, you know, in the common world, especially when I'm out shopping. Uh, I, I'm just, I don't know, either shopping or on the internet or commercial, they're saying, they kind of mishmash all holidays, secular holidays, winter festival into one word and call that a happy holiday. Uh, you know, as Catholics, of course, in the Christian life, we're celebrating Christmas, right? Uh, and I uh, just shared this with you. I, I was, I'm regularly amazed that of any religious holiday in history in the world, the world is drawn to the celebration of Christmas. Catholic, Christian, not Christian, atheist, whatever. They're all drawn to it. There's some in the mystery of the incarnation of Christ that the world is drawn to. They may not know quite what or why, right? But there is. And it's more than just shopping and tinsel. I forgot to bullet it, right? It is because of the mystery of who God's only Son is, right? So, as we uh, celebrate these last few days of Advent, uh, to prepare ourselves to enter more fully into this mystery of who Jesus Christ is, who uh, his incarnation, he becomes flesh, how God the Father reveals himself to us, and prepare ourselves to celebrate that first coming and be prepared for his second coming when we meet our Lord. May God bless us all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come humbly before our Lord in God as repentant sinners, offering these petitions for the needs of the church and the conversion of all sinners. <coughs> for our parish, may God, who is the source of all peace, be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the dedicated clergy and religious leaders of our diocese who have remained faithful to their calling by God, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in their mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are traveling during this holiday season, may their journeys be safe and experience renewal with family and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick, may they experience God's healing peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, may the Savior, Christ Jesus, meet them at heaven's door. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly God and Father, who have revealed your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to us, through the message right there, the angel delivered to Mary, fill us with your grace and send your Holy Spirit upon us, that our families may continue to grow in holiness, that we may continue to go in this uh, gift of faith, and this freely assenting to all the truths of God that you revealed to us and ultimately to assent to your will for us, that we may faithfully live and proclaim the gospel of life and the salvation of all souls. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power 
the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer, and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he sent a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, 
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Richard of Chichester, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Alfred our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you after passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's before the uh, solemn blessing to our Advent, uh, just with thy God. Uh, to, uh, in advance, wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas if you're traveling, if um, you won't be with us uh, for Mass on uh, Christmas Day. Uh, may you have a blessed and uh, happy Christmas, and uh, please, uh, God speed you safely in your way. Otherwise, uh, we will see you, uh, hopefully, for Mass on Christmas Day, in person or online. Uh, please consult the uh, Parish Bulletin and the Parish website for the Christmas Mass schedule. It's pretty close to what it was last year. Uh, just please consult the schedule. Uh, definitely going to live stream the Mass uh, Christmas morning at 8.30. I, I might add another one, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but I think that should be everything. And then, uh, again, if you're traveling, Godspeed. And uh, have a blessed Christmas, and we'll see you hopefully during the Christmas season. The Lord be with you. And with you, Spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith, and the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, 
joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion, at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with a rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael the Archangel, Archangel defend us in our battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seizing the wounded of souls. Amen.